Carlos. ¿Cómo está, muchacho? ¿Qué pasa? ¿Está bien? I hope so. Or in French, if you'd rather. Ça va, mon ami? Ça va bien? I hope so. So I'm out for a walk, which is glorious because about a week ago, a week ago tomorrow, I did a major something to my lower back. And uh, this long walk that I just took this afternoon would not have happened last Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. So it's been a while. It's been a while, so I'm very happy to be getting out here. But since I was out here, I would, uh, I would record my five minutes for you. So let's get to the uh, important stuff right now. Your birthday. That's right. Somebody we all know and love had a birthday yesterday. So, uh, happy birthday, Carlos. Bet it feels good to be, uh, 36, huh? That's what you are, right? 36? That's what Norm told me, anyway. And I always believe what Norm tells me. He's an honest guy. So, uh, happy birthday. Or in Spanish, Feliz cumpleaños, muchacho. Está bien. And of course, we have to do French as well. So, joyeux anniversaire, mon ami. Fantastique. So, bon fête. Bon fête. So, I've had a chance to wish you a happy birthday. How much more time do I have? Halfway through already. So I'm just walking back to my house to uh, continue on my work from home day, which I never thought I would uh, get a chance to do, but man, I love this. So, it's up early in the morning working, but I can stop in the middle of the day, take an hour or so walk, which is actually helping my back. I'm to the point now where um, the pain is less enough, decreased to a certain point where I can actually get up and walk, and now walking actually makes me feel better. So, there you go. So, good stuff. Um, we're coming to the end of summer here, though. It'll be Labor Day in my country pretty soon. Already the state fairs are going. Maryland State Fair is going. New York's State Fair is going. We have a fair here in uh, in the York, Pennsylvania area. That actually doesn't start until the beginning of September. It's actually after Labor Day. So it's after all of the other fairs around us are over. But Now, growing up as a kid, this was always the... The swan song of summer was when the fair was going on. Because once the fair ends, that's your last day. And after that, it's Labor Day's done, and you go back to school. So, kids have already gone back to school here in PA, but they, they go back after Labor Day in Maryland. So, I have a little bit of a, an easier commute still for another, meh. 11 days, and then once the kids go back to school, it'll be chaos again, but there you go. According to AAA, Baltimore and Washington drivers, worst in the country. I'm here to tell you, AAA's got that one right. They're terrible. <laughs> so, anyway, that was my uh, recording for you, Carlos. I hope you had a lovely birthday. Enjoy being 36, because, you know, pretty soon you'll turn 40, and then you'll, you'll be 50, and then you'll be old like me. So, take care, buddy. See you later. Activity started. This is...
this CBC News. I'm Anise Hidari. Hurricane Harvey has slammed into Texas, whipping that state's coastal regions with high winds and heavy rain. The hurricane made landfall near Corpus Christi in the southwest as a Category 4 storm as it moved inland and lost some strength. It's now been downgraded to a Category 1, but there is still enough wind and rain to do damage. Steven, the CBC Stephen D'Souza has more from Houston. The high winds are just one threat. The storm really is bringing a one-two punch, and that second threat is the rain. If we're expected to get a year's worth of rain in the next three days in some areas. Up to 1,000 millimeters could be uh, experienced. So oh, well. the other problem is that rain could continue to fall steadily up until at least Wednesday. And so but that's pretty bad news for places, especially like Houston, which are very susceptible to flooding. And then along the coast, we have a very high percentage of the U.S.'s oil and gas refining capability located on the coast. On top of that, the conditions are also creating tornadoes. So there's numerous tornado warnings popping up throughout the state. And so the flooding and the rain will be the key to be watching for today and over the next few days as this slow-moving storm continues to batter Texas. Stephen D'Souza, CBC News, Houston. Turning to international news, Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro is reacting angrily to new sanctions announced by the United States. Yesterday, the White House announced President Donald Trump had signed an executive order cutting off Venezuela's access to American financing. The CBC's Nicole Ireland has details. President Nicolas Maduro was defiant as he responded to U.S. sanctions in a cabinet meeting, saying Trump's aggression will just liberate Venezuela from dependence on the United States. Maduro was also threatening to punish his political opponents, accusing them of prompting the U.S. actions. The country has been plagued by political violence, including more than 100 deaths, as Maduro seized power in an election widely viewed as a sham last month. The White House is trying to cripple Maduro's ability to fund his authoritarian rule by barring his government and the country's state-run oil company from accessing America's bond and equity markets. Stephen Mnuchin is the U.S. Treasury Secretary. Maduro may no longer take advantage of the American financial system to facilitate the wholesale looting of the Venezuelan economy. Despite the tough economic sanctions, the White House stopped short of halting crude oil trading with Venezuela. Nicole Ireland, CBC News, Toronto. An evacuation order is still in place for a small British Columbia community east of Kelowna after another wildfire started burning. Officials say the fire, which broke out Thursday, is about 400 hectares in size. It's closed a highway and forced more than half of the local population to evacuate their homes. There are still no reports of structural damage, and more than two dozen firefighters worked overnight to Saturday to protect buildings. Neonatal intensive care units in Ontario are dealing with a surge in sick babies. Officials in that province are trying to determine why most of the province's ICUs for fragile newborns have seen a spike in demand for about a month now. Lisa Shang reports. Since the beginning of June, hospitals like Mount Sinai started seeing an unusual increase in the number of sick preterm babies. In fact, a 10% increase in July compared with the same time last year. The issue came to a head earlier this week when multiple southern Ontario hospitals closed their NICUs. That includes sick kids in Sunnybrook and one in London and another in Hamilton because all the bassinets were full. And Mount Sinai just had one available bed. President of the Ontario Medical Association, Sean Watley. These are our sickest patients. This is a reflection of our whole system. Our system is stretched to max capacity. But the province's local health integration network for Toronto Central says there's currently no indication capacity is the issue. CEO Susan Fitzpatrick. I mean, it may be a temporary surge, and uh, if we do have the right capacity, it may be a new higher volume. That's the CDC's Lisa Shing reporting. For news at any time, you can head to our website, cbcnews.ca. I have to thank Jim for starting your five minutes episode nine off. Hello. With his multilingual rendition of my birthday greeting. Cheers. There's Max. 
There he is. Ride this bike. Pay attention to your bike, Max. Got me rollerblading. We're going to do 14 today. We have done. Uh, we got I think six left. So we're doing a good job. Just want to say hi to the Berkshires. Max, can you say hi? Hi. <laughs> He's just learned how to ride a bike. Have a great day. Beautiful day. So there I am at Lorenzo's, loading up my slice at the Fixin's Bar. Garlic and whatnot. Mm -hmm. When I see this guy over at the pizza box, is giving me the stink eye. So I give him the crook eye back, you know? Then I notice that he's not alone. I'm taking on the entire Van Buren boys. Van Buren boys? Yeah. There's a street gang named after President Martin Van Buren? Oh, yeah, and they're just as mean as he was. So I make a move to the door, and you know, they block it. So I lunge for the bathroom. I grab the knob. Occupy them. <laughs> and they back me up against the cartoon map of Italy. And all of a sudden, they just stop. What? What yeah. happened? Because I'm still holding the garlic shaker, you know, like this. I'm only showing eight fingers. Well, what does that mean? That's their secret sign. <laughs> See, Van Buren, he was the eighth president. They thought I was a former Van B boy. Wow. How was the pizza? Oh, it was a little oily. <laughs> Did it go? The run? Yeah, fine. I went to onto Mount Dart and did the lower trails, and then I went through Bow Park to uh, Mount Dart Market, got the potatoes, and walked home. Uh huh. When are you off? I, I, it could be 10 or 11 15, so I think I'm going to do 11 15. Those are the times the bus is there at That's Mount Dart Market. No, not at Mount Dart Market, but at Kenner Market. The 39. I'd get it right here. I'm gonna go to Mount Dark Market. The 39? 39, Kenmore and Shadow. Kenmore and Shadow. And then get off at Chalice and walk across the road to where that little loop is. Okay. So if I go 11, like either 10, 27, but I think I'd rather just make sure everything's quick and here and then. Uh, you know that she ate all the stuff that was in the lower... Did she? Yeah, but she couldn't get any more out. So she... Well, I wasn't sure because I fed her at eight. Yeah. But by then she demolished what was available in the bottom trough of the feeding. But she should be able to see that it's there. As soon as she would knock at it, it might come down. Well, I was trying to devise a way of... Testing that. Yeah. yeah. What was it? All you have to do is give it a tap every two days to make sure that some falls down. She might knock it right over. Hello, and welcome to your first class in how to understand and speak Glaswegian.
Glaswegian is the spoken dialect in the city of Glasgow. For those of you who do not know, Glasgow is not the capital, but the largest city in Scotland. Now, if at this point you're thinking, I already speak English, Scotland, as far as I'm aware, is an English-speaking country, surely communication would be quite straightforward. But what if this happens? For example, if you're an American tourist, you may approach a Glaswegian gentleman and ask for directions. You might ask something along the lines of, excuse me, pardon me, um, can you recommend some good bars around here? Now, this isn't a problem for the Glaswegian gentleman because he will understand you perfectly as he has been subjected to Hollywood and American television for as long as he can remember. However, he may reply like this. All right, big man, look for a swally. No danger. Here's what you want to do, right? What you want to do is go straight down the road, right? Don't stop till you get to the bus stop, right? See you across the road? My car thought he's still sort you right out. Catch you after, big in. Exactly. However, not to worry. Throughout these classes, we will be learning how to pick up on these unusual phrases and understand exactly what they mean. You may even find yourself delivering a few yourself. So in our first class, we're going to look at pleasantries and greetings. Contrary to other cultures where the standard greeting is hello, hi, or good day, the Glaswegian people take a different approach. One of the most popular forms of greeting someone in Glasgow is by asking the question, are you all right? However, a Glaswegian person would not deliver it in such a way. They would simply say, all right, all right. This type of greeting is normally followed by a social address, such as buddy, mate, pal. But probably one of the most popular social addresses in Glasgow is an acknowledgement of the individual's stature and gender. For example, all right, big man. All right, wee man. In this case, the word we means little. When addressing a female, it's normally, all right, darling. As we just learned, the Glaswegian people like to shorten their questions down to just one word. Their time is very valuable, and therefore they are naturally efficient within their speech. This same technique is used when expressing joy. When a Glaswegian person is expressing joy, there are some key words to look out for. For example, one word that you're bound to hear a lot is belter. Belter. A very versatile word used to express something good or impressive. The wonderful thing about this word is that it has no restrictions regarding past, present or future tense. For example... Belter. Oh, belter. Belter. Let's hear another very popular expression of joy. Oh, ya dancer! Ya dancer. This phrase is most commonly used when experiencing luck or good fortune. For example, winning a sports bet or three pounds on a lottery scratch card. It can also be used to congratulate a companion on the same accomplishment. Ya dancer! Well, unfortunately, that's all we have time for this week, but be sure to click the subscribe button and tune in next time when we take a look at threats and signs of aggression. Uh-oh. But until next time, I hope the rest of your week is a belter. My salsa recipe and method. Hello, my name is Samantha. I am an American English voice. Four large ripe tomatoes. The heart of one small celery. Four steamed green beans, one can of kidney beans, one hot chili, two onions, two small carrots, three cloves of garlic, 400 grams of lean ground protein, in one jar of medium salsa, a tablespoon, cumin, fresh black pepper and salt to taste. Served on cooked potato. Chop up the celery, onion, garlic and chili. Saute in a large heavy bottom pan with the ground protein. Stir until all the ingredients are mostly cooked. Add cumin and seasoning. In a separate glass bowl add the chopped, peeled tomato, salsa and kidney beans. Heat these items in a microwave oven for 5 minutes. Add to the sautéed ingredients on the stove. Stir briefly and simmer for about 45 minutes. That should be it. So this is the Glen Denning Trail, coming off Mount Doug, heading towards um, Mackenzie Avenue, and then I'll be cutting up on Wend and heading to the uh, library.
Hello. Yesterday was a run day, so today is a non running day, but to get a little more exercise instead of using my bike to get the uh, small amount of groceries that I need. I'm walking about five miles round trip, that is. The last, uh, the last two miles will be with groceries. There's a slight trail. These trees are all about 50 years old, maybe 100. Not the oldest of the trees around here. This is all secondary growth, or tertiary growth as they say. Very popular spot for dog walkers. Park right at the gate and come in with their pooches. Good morning. Good morning to you. Hello, dog. end of the uh, trail system where that central bollard is located. Take a right just along here, and uh, I'm going to take a picture of the rose that I saw yesterday. This is Eric Road, and that is Livingston Avenue, and the rose is just above that Honda. See that one I mean? Yeah, I'm gonna have to reach up to take that picture. Oh, there's a better one. Time 46 minutes 7 seconds. Distance 4.01 kilometers. Average pace 11 minutes 31. I was invited to a special media launch uh, up in Glasgow in the, the Scottish Music Centre or something along those lines, a place I've never been, very nice wee venue. Uh, I was there with a few media people, people that are quite important in the media business, some folk from uh, TV, uh, I think, uh, <laughs> I don't actually know. I didn't know that many, many people there, I did meet them. Love Muscle, The Beard of Doom, Tom Russell, if you don't know who Tom Russell is, uh, he is a broadcasting legend here in Scotland, he will be back on air very, very soon. Uh, so speaking to Tom, 
and a few other people, Alistair and Graham. Uh, I'm speaking to them. Uh, of course, Dave and Margaret, they were there, and uh, it was a great wee launch night. Uh, make sure you go to the public launch nights in Glasgow and broadcast on Friday night. Uh, Dave will be supported there with his special guest, Lucy Zirins. She's coming up from London for that one. Tickets still available if you want to go along to it. So I'm going to play a wee tune. Uh, I think it's rather appropriate. I'm going to play Whiskey in My Blood. Dave is supported and sponsored by Glengoyne Whiskey. Uh, there's a few bottles of whiskey on for the, the guests on Thursday night. I don't drink whiskey. It bums the back of my throat. I know a Scotsman should drink whiskey. I just, I've tried. I can't do it. I don't like it. Uh, but there was a lot there, a lot of going. Uh, there was also a raffle, which I didn't win. And uh, Tom Russell, who, as I say, was there, left early because he was away doing uh, a speech on his new book launch. And uh, Tom won. It's no fair, is it? All those beers stick together. The last album was called Whiskey in My Blood for obvious reasons. Here's the title track. <laughs> Should I cry? Should I lie? Should I stay right down and 